Well, welcome. Uh, today's talk was entitled Hacking is a Tool for Solving Problems and Creating Change. It's the first time I've done this talk uh, in this format. So uh, if you enjoyed it, please do uh, send me a note on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, my name is Daniele Fiendaka. I'm the co-founder of Utopia. Uh, you can also tweet me at Yellyf. F. Um, so um, I don't know whether anyone on this call is familiar with Utopia. We're a culture change business. Uh, we help businesses deliver more entrepreneurial, more purposeful, and more inclusive uh, cultures. So uh, a lot of the work we've been doing, especially over the, you know, to be honest, the, our work has changed since COVID-19. Uh, we're doing a lot more just specific culture work. I think it's fair to say in the last five weeks, uh, we have done far more uh, because of events in America with the murder of George Floyd, uh, companies are coming to us more with much more inclusion and diversity work. We're going to cover all these areas in terms of when we look at hacking. Hacking is relevant to every single thing that you do. Uh, so, getting the most of this webinar, use chat for comments stroke discussion. Uh, Ellie will be monitoring that. I won't see that, but Ellie will point out if there's anything else. Whereas, hopefully, we'll have time at the end for some Q&As. If you could use the Q&A functionality specifically for any questions you want to ask, please do. Uh, and please don't wait till the end to ask any questions. Uh, put them in as they come through. And as I said, uh, for those that have been here since the beginning, be ready with a felt tip pen and paper. Uh, this is a work through exercise. I will give uh, people that haven't necessarily got a pen and paper next to them, I will give you five, uh, ten seconds to quickly go and get some. Uh, while I do that, I would just also suggest uh, if you can have a glass of water next to you, that's also good. Uh, we will be here for 45 minutes. So, the program for today um, three sections. Uh, the first section is the intro to hacking. What is hacking? What do I mean when I say hacking? Uh, it is not, uh, if you look at Wikipedia, uh, the definition in hacking of Wikipedia is different to uh, a definition that myself and quite a few other practitioners are using more and more. I'm going to give you examples of how it's used, uh, specifically in business, but it doesn't have to be in business. And, and actually, if we look at the third area, which is using it in practice, we, you can use it for anything you want. So uh, that's a very much an individual exercise, and you can use it for even stuff that you're thinking about at a personal level. So how many consider yourselves hackers? Uh, please put in chat, just write yes if you consider yourself a hacker. And Ellie will tell me whether there are many of you that are hackers out there. So far, we've got a no, a yes, and a sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I love, I literally, I love the sometimes answer. I think, uh, I, I wish I was only a hacker sometimes. As my, uh, as we'll go through it, my wife uh, says to me often, uh, it must be very tiring being you. Um, I'm a hacker the whole time, uh, and I will talk that, go through that in a bit more detail. For those that for those that say no, I mean, if you look at the dictionary or you look at Wikipedia, the definition of a hacker is primarily still a computer hacker. We are not talking about computer hacking. Uh, but if you if the minute you heard hacking, you thought computer hacking, that's not surprising. That is the dictionary definition. Uh, really, what what I'm going to talk about here, and the reason we use hacking, and we use hack, we do use hacking a lot as a business. The reason we use hacking is if we look at uh, our lives, we look at society. So if we're looking at, so I ran a hack just on Tuesday around uh, combating systemic racism, as an example. So if we look at um, if we look at everything that we exist within, we exist within extremely complex networks. Uh, so our personal lives can be complex networks. Our companies are definitely complex networks and society is complex networks. So in order to create change, you can't just shift or change one thing within a network and expect the whole network to shift. What you actually have to do is you have to start breaking that system down. So a hacker, you need to go back to the definition, which is hack, 
to cut or chop the repeated irregular blows. So if we take this enormous system, it's actually about breaking it down into much smaller chunks, and then breaking down those smaller chunks into even smaller chunks until you get to lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things that you need to fix. And then you can start fixing each and every one of them. Really, that's what is at the core of hacking. It is, you know, people say to me, is hacking just not problem solving? And partly, yes, it is problem solving because you're solving problems at that smaller level. But actually, it's a methodology and it's a state of mind. It's a recognition that you have to make lots and lots and lots of small changes continuously and actually creating systems where that hack is happening throughout the organization. Those hacking, those hacks are happening throughout the organization ongoing. This is perhaps my favorite definition. Uh, it was given to me by a good friend of mine, John Wiltshire, who invented, if anyone's ever used artifact cards, John invented artifact cards. I highly recommend them. They're much better than post-it notes. <laughs> And he wrote, a uh, hacker is someone that will assume, always assumes that one part is broken. And that's definitely my methodology. I'm a hacker at nature. Most things that I've done in my career have simply because I've seen a problem and I then want to fix it. A good example of that is six years ago, uh, I found myself in a situation around gender equality and uh, I just couldn't help but notice that uh, a lot of the dialogue uh, that was happening around gender equality just, just wasn't inclusive of, of men uh, and as no minority in history has ever um, ever created change without support of the majority I, I thought there must be a better way of doing it so I created Token Man with three other people which is an initiative to get men into the gender equality discussion so that men could help become change makers within that so that's a good example of just trying to solve a problem here's an, an incredible hacker this is uh, hopefully many of you recognize her. This is Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale in the 1850s found herself in the Crimea War. But uh, deep, and deep, you know, deep down, she was actually a statistician. She loved, she loved stats, but she found herself as a nurse. That was what she was doing as a profession. Um, but what she did when she found herself in the hospital is every time someone died, she wrote down and she classified what they died of. So there were three things that they would have died of. So firstly, they died from the wounds that they got with from the war. The second thing was they died from infection they got in the wounds. The third thing that they died from was um, just getting a disease in the hospital that had nothing to do with the war whatsoever. Uh, and what she found over a period, I think it's about a six month period, as she collected that data, she found that two and three were killing more people than one. So i.e. she went to the, the doctors and said, listen, the hospital is killing more people than the, um, the hospital is killing more people than the war itself. We need to change something. And what she ended up changing is she convinced doctors to wash their hands and their instruments before and after each surgery. So that was the first time in history anyone had ever done that. I know it sounds absolutely horrific, uh, but you can imagine that idea then spread across the world. And you could argue that Florence Nightingale saved more people in history than anyone else. Um, this is another hacker. This is Sir David Brailsford. He took over the Team Sky in 2010 uh, with specifically with the remit of making uh, the, the British cycling team win as many gold medals as they can in the 2012 Olympics. And he did something really interesting. He actually, he called, it was marginal gains theory. So he actually went in and whereas everyone was focusing specifically on training and physical ability, everyone else was actually focusing uh, and, and the equipment itself. He said, okay, and we're still going to do that, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at everything else that no one's looking at, and I'm going to improve it by 1% to 2%. So he looked at everything. I mean, there are 100, 100 different hacks and changes that Sir David Brailsford made with his team, uh, including uh, the British cycling team. And it's very relevant today. The British cycling team were the only team not to shake hands with anyone else during the opening ceremony. And that was fundamentally simply because they'd been trained how to ensure that they don't spread, uh, how they don't catch colds, flu, because they just didn't want to risk being ill and not being able to participate and be at their best. And that British cycling team is perhaps one of the most, most uh, the 2012 cycling team is one of the most successful teams in history, having delivered 70% of the gold medals in that particular games for the cycling team. And I love this. Uh, 
if if we if we were if we were in a physical environment, this is the slide uh, that everyone takes a photo of. Uh, this is just showing this idea that actually consistently improving your business or life by 1% every day for a year has doubled the impact as improving by 10% each day for a month. Consistency plus compounding is extremely powerful. So it's this whole idea of making lots and lots and lots of small changes as opposed to a few bigger changes has a much bigger impact on you and it's consistently and you keep on making that change. I'm going to give you a couple examples of hacks now. Uh, this is perhaps my favorite hack. Uh, this is one that I saw in the world per se. I actually was in Brighton. I saw this bin and I noticed it first and foremost because it was the only cigarette bin that didn't have cigarette butts around it on the floor. Uh, and it was simply because it tied into it, it understand human beings and it asked this universal question that everyone has an answer to. Uh, and just by putting your cigarette in, you made that choice. So very, very clever hack, understanding human psychology. The next one I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the hack in a minute, but was actually from a bike company. Um, they used to be a client uh, in, in a previous life of mine. Uh, it's called Van Moof. Uh, they do uh, the most amazing electric bikes. And about three years ago, they started exporting to Japan. Uh, I think it's become their biggest market. But what they found for the first 12 months is they found a, a really high proportion of their bikes were arriving in Tokyo damaged. And they looked at other, you know, obviously put, uh, increasing packaging, changing suppliers, but fundamentally the costs were prohibitive to the, the margin they were making on the bikes. So they just very simply asked themselves a question, which was, what other products that are the same size as our bikes and actually the same weight of our bikes, what other products are being shipped consistently and not getting damaged? And quite simply through their research, they found that TVs are the same size, the same weights, but just don't get damaged. And they take the, they actually use the same carrier. Uh, and that was simply because people, when they see a TV on a box uh, and they know they're carrying the TV, they're just more careful. So it's just, again, the psychology of people understanding a TV was in the box. So all they did very simply, and again, sorry, just next, is they, they drew a TV on their boxes and tricked people that were actually transporting their bikes to think they're actually um, shipping TV. It's very clever and all of a sudden the issue of breakages went overnight. Again, give an example in culture change. As I said, we do a lot of work with inclusion and diversity. In the late 1970s, Orchestra had a huge issue with uh, people actually uh, women getting into orchestras uh, and they and, and they recognized that that was partly because of the way they did the the process of interviewing for a role is that have three people in the audience on the chairs that have, they have one person on the stage and those three people could see that person they recognized there was a level of unconscious bias within that that decision making process so all they did uh, it was an orchestra uh, in the states in the late 1970s it just started putting a curtain in front of the people that were uh, auditioning and for the first couple of months there was no change uh, it was still just the men that were getting the positions and then someone realized that the stage was actually a wooden floor and so because women invariably wore high heels you could actually hear when they were talking. So the high heels were telling people that actually it was a woman playing. So all they did is they asked people to take their shoes off and as soon as they took their shoes off, it completely transformed who started to get the roles. And so all of a sudden that unconscious, they completely took the unconscious bias out and all of a sudden women were getting roles whereas they hadn't done previously. So a brilliant example of a hack within a space of inclusion diversity. So just to summarize the hacker culture, so we will go in and we will often work with businesses to get them to become hackers, but to make sure not only as a business to become hackers, but actually to inspire all of their team to become hackers. They just have a hacker culture. And this is a definition that has come up since I've been doing this talk now. For, uh, I've been doing a version of this talk, I'm talking about hacking for four years now. As I said, this is a completely new version of it, so I'd love to get feedback. But um, this, is, this came up about three years ago, which is that hacker culture is a subculture of individuals who enjoy the intellectual challenge of creatively overcoming 
and circumventing limitations of software systems to achieve novel and clever outcomes. The hack I'm suggesting to that definition is quite simply take out the word software. Uh, and that's what we do within organizations is we create a subculture of individuals who like actually overcoming and circumventing the limitations that currently exist within that system. So we're going to do a poll now. I, hopefully that's giving you an overview. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples of hacks, but then we're going to go into, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to take you through your own hack. This is as much for my own his, uh, interest, but also to see who's here. Uh, Ellie, if you could share the poll, we're going to, we're going to do a poll now, which is what you would like to hack. So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds just to answer that question. What would you like to hack right now? Excellent. Okay, I'm seeing this move. Great. So what we have here, um, we have inclusion at 40%, leadership at 35%, uh, mental health at 10% and happiness at 15%. Uh, great. Creativity, masculinity, got no. So I, th I think this gives me a good idea of who he who's on this uh, session. Um, I'm not going to go through each of them uh, if that's what you want. And again, don't think that this is what you've got to do when we go into the exercise. This was just for, for, I think it was just an interesting exercise just to see what people are thinking about. So putting it into practice. So I'm just going to talk to you now about what we, how we use hacking. And then as I said, we're going to get you to actually test and go through the process yourself with something that you're passionate about right now. Uh, sorry, the poll keeps on coming up. So putting it into practice. So we, we actually have developed, we run a, it's either between an hour and a half and two hours. Uh, it will depend on the audience. When we do it with senior leadership, it tends to be two hours. So we will, so those, those ones you've just voted on, we actually uh, use hacking as a process for, all, for each of those. And as you can see here, we have uh, 16 uh, different hacking workshops. Uh, I think there's the, I, I, I'm looking at it now, I already see that uh, belongings not on there, for example. Uh, uh, so that, that we, we we probably have about twenty we have about twenty workshops that we regularly deliver to clients on a wide area. Um, these are the clients we have we continue to and we have delivered for just to give you an idea of the type of businesses that are using hacking uh, and actually really really find the methodology works with their teams in terms of understanding and actually coming up with real problems. So. Um, I'm going to give you, uh, so what we're going to do now, so that's how we put it into practice. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to, we're going to get you to, to start using the hacking methodology. And as, as we go through, I will give examples, as I said, from some of these clients of hacks, real life hacks that have come out of the sessions that we've run for them and they've now implemented. So what I want you to do, uh, and I'm going to come out of uh, screen share for one second so I can see chat, is I would like you to write in chat uh, the topic that you would like to hack now. So this is, this is, a, this is, it can be one of the ones that we talked about before. So I'm going to quickly read them to give you some input. So the ones that we work on are things like purpose, customers, belonging, empathy, inclusion, loneliness, care and parenting, social mobility, mental health, hiring, neuroinclusion, vulnerability, ethnicity, business, leadership, creativity, happiness. So I've given you just some examples. What I'd like you to all do in chat is to start writing down what you would like to hack yourselves. Sarah, I love, I love uh, that ha Hacking Happiness is my favorite workshop. Uh, we did it for the first time three weeks ago. Uh, it's fantastic. Staying connected, newer inclusion. Thank you, Hannah. We have customers, we have leadership. We'll just wait for a few more. You do all need to have a something. You do need to choose something. Otherwise, the next uh, 20 minutes, you'll find quite hard 
because you do have to work through the interview process brilliantly. So, and I think, and I think just recognizing that you can just go do, you know, the hacking can, you can start big, but ultimately, you, you know, the interview process, I think is a brilliant place that you can hack. You can go small, inclusion, entrepreneurship, neuro inclusion. So really just anything you don't, and again, hopefully those that haven't shared, you do have something so that you can work for the rest. I'm gonna come back into sharing. So you've all chosen something you can hack so now 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 what i want you to do the next exercise is we're going to get you to break those things down into manage more manageable parts so what you're going to say is okay happiness is and again I, for happiness i'm going to go through happiness for you so the person that chose happiness hopefully i'm going to make it easier for you but uh, for some of you um you need to just start working out what those parts are i'm going to give you some examples of what i mean by manageable parts so as I said, we do a lot of work on hacking inclusion. So when we look at hacking inclusion, we will actually break it down first and foremost. The first thing that we do is we break it down into leadership. So how you lead us as people, recruitment. So who do, you, who do you recruit? Where do you recruit from? What does the process look like? What does the interview process look like? So interview process would be the first layer that will come down from recruitment and then you would start hacking your culture so what's the underlying culture of the business and then retention and then when we look at new, new retention we tend to break down into these four categories we sometimes go into fifth if we're doing your inclusion we will actually will will focus on the physical uh, building so what was it like physically within the building you will have the training that people get you will have what happens when parent when people are parents or carers will have what does the promotion look like and what does flexible working look like uh, allyship so we run something called hacking allyship and then that particular one we break it down into leadership so what are you doing as leaders to to create a culture in which people are allies what are you doing as the, as self to become a better ally and what are you doing within your how is your culture shaped to enable people to be better allies within the workplace the third one which i said i mentioned is hacking happiness so the way that we break hacking happiness down is firstly we have something called the happiness equation uh, and we believe we believe that happiness is made up principally of three things which is belonging health and purpose and then health is then broken down into financial health physical health and mental health we also sometimes call this the wealth equation uh, and why we like it is because finance doesn't even sit in the first line you know wealth for us is belonging health and purpose of financial health just fits within health so hopefully that gives you a steer what i would like to do is just take your one topic that you chose that you want to break down and start breaking it down into smaller bits at this point in time you're not solving problems you're not coming up with barriers you are just trying to break it down into smaller bits so the interview process i'm going to help the interview process the interview process will be breaking it down from the literally you'll start looking at the process so uh from uh the offer let the the letter to to get people to come into the interview from the interview process itself from where they sit in the meet so it's really breaking it down into that process and working from actually communicating people after the first round of the process to the second process how do you reject people how so it's every single level of that interview process that you want to be breaking down and actually you might even break down the interview itself into smaller parts I'm just gonna give you one minute. I'm hoping you are all scribbling down on your paper. While you're scribbling down, I just want to, Christine, you asked about the 1%. Uh, I, uh, we are the city. I'm more than happy to share these slides after this deck. So I don't, don't worry about scribbling down uh, in any slides. Um, you will get an opportunity to get the deck afterwards. Uh, and if for any reason you don't get it, please do contact me, uh, linking with me on LinkedIn. Sorry, I just dropped my pen. So what I'd like to do is I would like to, uh, some of you, can you, can you, um, if you could just type uh, uh, just a few, it doesn't need to be all of you, but if someone's got one, you know, uh, uh, if someone's got a section, put the section and start putting down some of the things you've broken it down to. Um, 
if you don't know the detail of the process you're trying to break down probably try and choose something else might be this case it's quite hard because if you don't know the process you might not work out the barriers so maybe uh, Sayantani, say sorry if I didn't say it right, uh, you might just look at one of the ones that I've already done or because uh, I think you do need to understand the process in order to come up with barriers uh, but we'll, 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 we'll see, it might be you can still do the next exercise or you can choose someone else's. So what I'm just asking you to do is someone could just go in there, take one of the ones they've done and maybe if you, you're happy, if you could share maybe what, what you started working on that would be great just to see. Thirty seconds. I'm not seeing any forthcoming, and don't worry. The breakdown is just to get you can get doing the next part of the exercise without having broken them down. The the, the the exercise is really to show you how you can best do it. So so for us, I used to run a I used to run an advertising agency. Creativity actually works better when you when you when you really refine what you're trying to approach. If I said to someone to now, can you come up with, can you tackle systemic racism? They just wouldn't know where to start. So just being able to break things down just allows you to start thinking. Don't worry if you've got nothing to share. I'm hoping you're still all there. Uh, you do seem to still be there. So I'm gonna go to the next stage and then uh, hopefully we'll, oh, we've, we've just got one. So I'm gonna quickly stop sharing. Self, uh, slow down speech to have more grammar to company, take on leadership training. Okay, so we're starting, we're starting to get some, some solutions. So this point, again, when you come back to, you see the breaking down, this, this point is not about current barriers, it's not current solutions, it's just trying to break it down. So what I'm gonna do is go to the next stage. Hopefully it will make a bit more sense to you. So, share. So the next stage is so what you would do is take one of those parts. So the into the person that was doing the interview process, you might not need to go break it down into smaller parts. But if you were doing something like happiness, it would be very hard for you just to start with happiness. So I don't know what you've broken down the happiness group, but it might it might be you go okay, you like belonging, health and purpose you might go okay i'm going to start tackling belonging or i'm going to start within health i'm going to look at financial health i'm going to look at mental health i'm going to look at physical health it just means that when you're starting to break things down it becomes much uh, start easy to do so the next stage is taking either the, the whole topic like interviews or one of the parts that you've broken it down into and start writing down the key barriers to getting to where you want to get to so I showed you the areas of inclusion. So say, for example, at this point in time, if we're running hacking inclusion, one team would have culture. And at this point, they would be going, okay, what are the barriers in our culture to having a more inclusive and diverse workplace? So I'm going to give you a good example. We're going to actually do this ourselves so that you can understand it. Hopefully, this is one that most people would appreciate. So one of the, as within inclusion diversity, one of the boxes was parenting and carer. What I would like you now all to do in chat is I want you to start writing the barriers that you think exist within workplaces with regard to parenting and caring in relation to inclusion and diversity. So what are the key barriers to parenting and carer? If you can start just writing in working hours, great, fantastic. We have working hours from Libby. Flexible working, yep. Yeah. Cost of care, the expert all women will at some point have children, yep. Yeah. That's the unconscious bias, sometimes conscious bias. Perception of commitment to work, lack of empathy, presenteeism. Yep, so you are starting to get your longevity of service. So this is a good example. You are seeing how this works. So I'm just going to skip. I haven't got all of them there. But here, for example, I've got most of those things. So the pay gap, parental leave inequality, senior leadership attitudes, uh, which I've got twice for some reason, because I think it's so important. Working hours, lack of flexible working. So you're starting to see how this would shape up. Uh, in a normal hacking session, if we've got a group of three, we would actually expect to get, to a, in any particular section, we'd expect in three minutes to get about 20 back barriers it can be extremely powerful what I'm going to do now individually again with your piece of paper 
take so you, you had the thing that you want to hack you had so happiness take look at one of your you've broken it down into smaller parts take one of those parts and start writing down all the barriers that exist within that sphere that are stopping you get to where you want to get to Again, you're doing this on your own. I'm just going to give you two minutes. It's just so you can experience it, you can understand it. So I'm hoping that you can take it away and actually use it. So I'm hoping you have got, uh, I'm hoping you all have started to write down a list of barriers. Uh, you only had two minutes there. So hopefully you start to feel that just bringing those barriers down and what that feels like as part of the process. We're not going to get you to share at this point in time. Um, what I want to do next is now, now is the fun part because now what you're doing is the hack is, is you've done the first part of the hacking, which is breaking things down into smaller parts. The second part of the hacking is then going coming up with solutions. So, um, what we now want you to do is we're going to get you to come up with hacks. So, so small ideas that you can do to help break down one of those barriers you've just identified. And just to help you, I'm gonna give you some examples so of those hacks. And these are all examples that have come out of hacks we have run with clients. This is probably one of my favorite, simply because it came out of the first hack we ever did as a business. Uh, we did a hacking inclusion uh, with uh, the senior leadership team of Coca-Cola European Partners uh, just under three years ago. And one of the questions we ask within the, within the session is we ask people to name religious holidays. We give them 10 seconds. And then we put up a slide of religious holidays that aren't Christian. And then we ask people to put their hands up if they wrote any of those religious holidays down. Um, about at least 50% of rooms uh, tend to not put their hand up, i.e. they only put Christian holidays down. And it's a recognition that our society here in the UK means that as Christians, I'm, I'm Catholic, I get, to, I get to celebrate my holidays around uh, automatically, whereas a lot of other religions have to take the time off. So one of the senior leaders recognised and said, why don't we give everyone within the business the opportunity to work Good Friday and Easter Monday and swap it for their own religious holidays? Uh, that was implemented within two months. Uh, it was first implemented three years ago at Easter. It's now been uh, rolled out uh, and it's now had over 200 people, Coco European partners, have, have actually taken that option, which I think is fantastic. Uh, actually, funnily enough, in the, in the second workshop where we did with Coca-Cola European Partners, this came out. Uh, this was a recognition that uh, this was inclusion. So this was a recognition that at the senior leadership team, there wasn't the diversity that would, they, would, they are aspiring towards uh, while recognising that they can't uh, necessarily, there's no quick fix. Uh, you know, without without 
without uh, sacking half those people on the board that they recognised that it was it needed to take time. And so what they did is Coco European now have a springboard, which is made up of completely a, a complete diversity of people that are handpicked from the people at the SLT, but they represent a much di more diverse mix, uh, and it has it's very representative uh, of the UK. And it allows, and it's a board that meets exactly the same time as the senior leadership team, and they actually get to solve real problems. So not only did they get the experience, not only does that talent get the experience to understand what it feels like to be on the board, where maybe they've never seen anyone like them on in in that senior leadership team, they all the senior leadership team also get to see the power of diversity in coming up with different solutions. Uh, this is something uh, that one of our other clients have done is they've now implemented reverse mentoring uh, just to help people uh, get a much better understanding of some of the issues that people within the outgroup face every day within their company. Uh, this is another company um, and they actually have put something what they called it was it was um, inspired by the Rooney rule in America uh, which is a rule uh, within the NFL uh, in terms of people of color being on short lists and they've just taken that and they've called it the Shirley rule and for the last 12 months is no position uh, can actually be interviewed for unless they have a that they have an interview list of 50 50 male and female uh, so if you can't if you don't have that short list of 50 50 you cannot actually uh, make make it make it up make that higher this was actually for mental health. This was for my hacking mental health. It's by an agency called Anomaly. Uh, and they did something called Self Care Pairs for Mental Health Week, which I absolutely love because actually it took it beyond Mental Health Week. And all they did is they actually created a buddy system around mental health where you pair up with someone in your company and your job to each other is simply to look after each other. So that could be simply going, how's your day? How are you feeling? How, how you know and you and you actually becomes an accountability partner so i know i'm not very good at drinking enough water every day so my my self-care pair would just remind me have you drunk enough water they're very small things but they make a big difference so what i'm going to get you to do now is i want you all to come up with i'm only going to give you two minutes i want you to come up with your own hack so come up with one idea so you've taken the problem that you want to solve, you've broken it down into smaller bits. We've taken one of those smaller bits, you've now written lots of barriers and the things that are stopping you get to where you want to get to. And now what you're doing is you come up with some ideas that you can implement tomorrow where that will help knock down those barriers. I'm gonna just give you a couple of minutes. And if some, and if so, if you're super quick and you're super speedy, and something comes to you uh, and you've already got it, please do just pop it into chat. So SLT Mentors, first one come through. Thank you, Jennifer. Which I think it does fit uh, alongside the reverse mentoring. That's kind of what they are doing there. But you're having those mentors, I think is really important. Uh, I'm going to give you just one more minute. If you could share, that's great. As I said, this is an exercise for yourself. So don't feel that you have to share. You've only, you've only had a total of six minutes. Uh, in terms of working it through. This for me was more about you just understanding the process and hopefully replicating the process. Uh, I will tell you, I will give you a resource if you like this process and you want to know more. Um, 
Uh, you can't actually see it, but this pin, uh, I, I, I will share it in a minute. Video applications of the CV is brilliant. Uh, yes, 100%. Actually, uh, this came up yesterday, uh, two days ago in a hack we did. Uh, video applications of the CVs, I would go beyond that. I think Libby, that's great. I actually think uh, what we should be doing is asking, appl giving applica uh, applicants a number of number of op of uh, choices on how they ap uh, apply so they can choose the one that works best for them. So for some people, CVs will still work. For others, video applications will still work. For some people, it could just be, um, you know, uh, without video, right? It could, it could just be voice. So a voice way of doing things. Knowledge sharing session show colleagues what is being worked on. Very good. I don't know what you were trying to challenge, but yes, uh, in all the business I've run in, I think that's a, that's that's always been something we've had and we've encouraged. So I'm just we're just we're coming up to the finish now. Uh, and if anyone has time to taste the ground, I'm more than happy to take questions. Uh, just to finish off. Um, so there's two things that you might want to do off the back of this. So firstly, uh, I have co-edited a book uh, called Creative Superpowers, Equip Yourself for the Age of Creativity. It is a business book. We believe uh, I'm actually a, just that I'm a qualified chartered accountant. I believe everyone should be creative. I believe we're about to enter an age of creativity. Problem solving is what's going to differentiate us from robots. So the only two things that differentiate us are actually creativity and emotional intelligence. The second thing is if if you like the sound of what we do as a business, please feel free to sign up to our newsletter. Uh, we do monthly updates on inclusion, entrepreneurial, and purposeful cultures. Um, I do have time. I'm, 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 I'm not going anywhere. So if anyone wants to ask any questions, please pop them in the Q&A, and I'm more than happy to uh, answer. If not, thank you for joining us. Uh, I think uh, over 95% over 90, of you stayed throughout. So I'm hoping that's a good sign. But as I said, it's the first time I've ever talk, done the talk in this format. So if you enjoyed it, please do uh, let me know either on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And obviously, if you'd like to connect and chat more about how we might be able to help you as you uh, as the business, please do uh, get in touch. Just seeing if there are any questions. No. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you for everyone, Hannah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Lisa. Absolute pleasure. Uh, it's I, I love doing these. It's just a shame I don't get to see you. I have got a question here from Christine. Some of these areas for hacking are incredibly vague and quickly non-measurable. Are there any ways or metrics that we use to track these things, such as happiness and belonging? So, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. Happy. So, firstly, happiness. Whereas we do um, a lot, most of our workshops are. Um, for companies and some of the workshops are for individuals within that company so happiness um, is a good example where we're actually focusing on an ind individual level so um, I promise you so the first thing I promise you is once you come into one of the hacking sessions like empathy you, you wouldn't think it's vague by the end of it it's very it's very clear the reason we do the topics is because they do need to be hacked and there's some very clear elements that you can bring to life so, so no one has come to one of our hacking workshops and thought oh that that, that, that I, I can't see how that works I think in terms of measurement I mean it, it's very hard to measure measurement, uh, to measure ha empathy. The, the way that we have measured empathy actually from uh, the clients that have, we run Hacking Empathy from is actually six months later asking their teams and their people uh, specifically uh, what changes have you seen in the last six months? We know one client, we went in and 50%, we just asked them an open question. It wasn't even about leadership. It was because we bring hacking in uh, we asked them what are the things that you've seen really change over the last six months and I would say 20% of them said leadership and the way that they listen to us and the way that they actually take time and their empathetic skills have changed significantly and for 20% of people to say that is just incredible so that's where we'll tend to get the measurement from by understanding the change it's actually making to the culture okay people tend to be relaxed Reluctant to help organize a hackathon due, due to work requirement. Do you have an advice out to run a small group? Okay. So let's be clear this is not a hackathon. Uh, I've done hackathons, I run hackathons. Hackathons are 
uh, very different processes. Hacking is a two hour workshop. Um, hackathons are far more, in, uh, they're far more complex. They're far more, uh, you tend to have, you need far more time into hackathons. Uh, we don't run hackathons. Uh, Hackathons, I mean, Facebook still run their daily hackathons, but the hackathons I have run and worked on, they, they take about a day, they're far bigger commitment, and they are, I couldn't answer to you, to be honest, I, 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 our methodology often can get to the same results that I think a hackathon can do. The difference with hackathons is you might be building apps, you might be building products that need far more thinking. So we kind of do the beginning thought piece, um, but so I can't I can't really help you there on on anonymous uh, whoever you are I'm sorry I can't help you uh, I think um, my advice would be to try not to do a hackathon and try and use hacking and you do it in a smaller workshop so you don't have to spend that time um, you know I say I say that you know when we you know the fact we ran a co-creation session to hack uh, systemic racism. The, the team as a team the amount of work we need to do prep that was significant i think the difference is the people coming in only had to give two hours of their time so i still still think to do a good hack you have to prepare for it properly uh when i say good hack but they are different to hackathons i hope that helped thank you everyone uh without any other questions i will leave you to have a fabulous day I will wave. Unfortunately, I can't see you waving back, but thank you. Bye.